Hey everyone, it's Deb here, and this is, let's say, week 53, something like that. Um, I'm a little late this week because I just couldn't get a video in until now. Um, I finally got to the point where school started again, um, so I actually have the first day today in a long time that everybody's gone so I can focus on what I need to do without 15 distractions around me. I know that's going to help me. Um, get through what I'm going through right now, but at least it allows me to make a video in a normal setting rather than sitting on the floor in the bathroom. So it's the only place I could feel like I could get a little privacy to kind of think straight and make a video. So um, anyways, for those that don't know my journey, I'm a little over a year post-op VSG, had my surgery August 6th through 2012. I was, my highest weight was 230 pounds, and as of um, last week, I was I've been hovering right around 150. I think I was 151 the last time I talked to you guys, somewhere in there. Today I'm actually 153. So I'm going up more than I ever have before. Um, I think I know a couple of reasons why. Um, but it, it's, you know, I've, I think it was about six weeks ago I was looking back on my notes because I write down my weight. I weigh Mondays and Fridays, and those are the days I write down. Every Monday is my weekly weigh-in, and then Friday is just sort of my... How did the week, how's the week going way in? And uh, I was looking back, and six weeks ago, I was at 149.2. That was my lowest. That's my lowest weight that I've seen since this journey started. Um, and then it was staying 149, 150, 151, you know. And I've done that several times where I'll hover in a two-pound range for a week or two and then drop back down another two pounds and then hover there for a while and then drop back down two pounds. But it's only been like one or two pounds that it's going up and bouncing on. Now I've bounced back up four pounds basically from my lowest where I was at. And if I was a maintenance range and saying, hey, 150 is my maintenance goal, okay. But that's not where I want to be. My doctor's fine with me here. He's totally happy with 150. He thinks that's an awesome weight for me. And for most of my health issues, it's perfect and it's fine. And I could live with this if this is all I had, but I'm not ready to give into that yet. Um, I really would like to see the 130s and decide myself where I would like to be. I think I've got more down the middle that I would like to get rid of, and the only way it's going to go away is getting that weight down and exercise all I want. That's where I carry my fat. And until I get down closer to 130, this is going to be more. It's, you know, down the middle. I mean, I have some loose skin in my lower Air, you know, lower belly area, but really I don't, um, I don't have loose skin like you would think. Um, it's, you know, maybe that can account for, maybe I've got to give myself five pounds to figure I've got some in there, but I still want to see the 130s. So that's where I'm sort of, and I think it's been stress, besides the fact that my body's leveling out and everything's not, it's, it gets harder and harder to lose any pounds because relative to what you have, your excess weight is a lot smaller. My excess weight is, you know, a lot smaller percentage, so my body's not letting go of it as easily. And that combined with stress and a little bit of stress eating is probably what's causing me to sort of level out the last, you know, couple of months, basically. So um, I have to just, you know, I mean, I think the main thing is, is, is figuring out what things are triggering my bad eating. Um, I don't really have binges like huge high caloric binges. Um, it'll, be, it'll be little things that creep in. You know, it might be a spoonful or two of Nutella, you know, or something like that. And, you know, that adds up if you do that every day. If you kind of get in a funky new habit of throwing in something that's a little bit higher sugar, especially when you get the higher carb. And you can eat a little Nutella and get away with it as far as it fits in your stomach. But then it adds up really fast, and all of a sudden you've got 400 calories and you've blown your day. If that's one day, it's not going to be a big deal. But if you're consistently doing that over a couple week period, that's when it's going to start affecting your weight or affecting any more weight loss. So I know this, and I've been working on it, and it's actually been getting better. And I think the only way it's going to get better is working out my issues that are stressing me out. I had too many things going too many directions. I quit the job I had because I just couldn't split my brain that many places and that job was getting me nowhere. So I had to focus in on some volunteer jobs that I was doing. Um, I finally got this big design volunteer job off my plate 
on Monday, um, and another um, another small one that I actually got paid for, a uh, small job um, that I was working on for somebody else um, off my plate. Because a lot of what I'm working on now is it's one of those things where somebody wants something done and I'm going to go in there and try to figure out how to do it. Um, and it's looking more and more like I'm going to head down the web development kind of direction, either you know, des designing slash just setting up websites kind of a thing, um, and then maintaining them. And that's, that's the one small job that I do is kind of an ongoing thing, is been helping them maintain it. I didn't really design the website. I've just sort of figured out how to help her maintain it and change it. And ultimately, I want to make her a new one, but that's another story. Anyways, um, it's, it's the puzzle pieces that I'm trying to figure out where to put my energy because I don't have like a big, this is what I want to be specific. Um, I have skills that I know I have. I have things I know I can learn and I know the way my brain works that I think I would be an asset at. And then I have to look at what does the market need. That's all the stuff I'm trying to figure out. And it sort of looks haphazard from the outside, which is why my husband is probably losing his mind. Because right now, he's been very supportive of my weight loss journey. Because I had a plan and I could tell him this is what you can expect. And pretty much... This is what happened when I told him what to expect. Um, at least I had a plan that made sense to him, it was his, his thinking. This plan that I have now, I can't even explain it to him as far as where I'm going with it. It's evolving. It has a direction and it has a goal because it's always been in the back of my mind and it's always been hovering back there saying, push me to the front and let me run. So I'm kind of at this stage where I need to take care of me and I think this is all part of my journey. The first step was losing this weight because I need to get myself back. I need to take care of me. I can't be good to anybody if I'm not taking care of me. Um, and sometimes it feels selfish because I'm not used to putting myself first, but that's what needs to happen so that I can be there for everybody else and I can make our lives better, hopefully. That's the plan. Um, at least be better off in some way, shape or form. So I have to sort of fight with everybody's opinions because they're not getting it, unless my husband doesn't get where I'm going with this whole trying to redevelop my, my whole income source. Um, and I'm really swayed by when somebody's disappointed in me or somebody's judging me or somebody's you know, thinking, I should be doing this. Why aren't you doing that? You should be doing this. If I was looking for a job, I'd be doing this, this, and this. You know, okay, well, you're not looking for a job, and I'm not looking for a job in the traditional sense of looking for a job. Um, I'm, I'm doing that. That's one portion of what I'm doing, though. There's like four other directions that I'm throwing myself into um, that could result in income that's not about finding an actual job at an actual business, working for somebody. It's about making my own things happen. Um, so I'm kind of going both ways, seeing, you know, I don't know, it's kind of like the spaghetti theory, just throws, you go enough direction, something's going to stick to the wall. If you hit the wall with the spaghetti, something's going to stick. And I've just got to figure out what that is. Um, right now it feels a little more haphazard, but it's getting more homed in. And that's hard for my husband to understand. He's just not, he's so level headed and he's so much of a planner. He likes to know things are set. And I'm not that way when it comes to something like this and making a change. It, it takes me a while to get to the place where I make the move. Because it'll mull around in my head and mull around in my head. So it's not like I'm a fast mover. It's just when I decide, when, it, when I hit the time where it is time to change, it's like, boom, got to be done now. And the way I go about it is something he doesn't understand. He does not think like I think. And if you're going to make a big change in your life that's going to move, you got to take risks. you got to, you know, and it, sometimes it's not going to work out. Some of the things I'm heading for are going to just totally be dead ends. And, but I don't know if I don't put myself out there, if, if I'm going to get anywhere, if there's even a chance for me to be able to own this direction that I've always had going on, but never been able to make it into an income. Um, I have to at least know it. So anyways, I've been busy with all of that and he's not always getting it. So I have to cut off and say, you know what, just let me run with this. Give me some time. I get that you don't get it. Can you give me at least a few months to just try to run with this and see where it takes me before you lose your mind? And, you know, it's been hard on him. Um, and I understand that. And I've just had to say, I can't worry about if you get it or don't get it. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm trying to do. 
I'm um, not exactly sure I'm going to get there, but um, that's where I'm at. So I think all that stress, um, this is something we were talking about in a support group last night, that, that when you lose the weight, a lot of your, you know, other, I don't know if they're always demons necessarily. We kind of decided that they weren't just the demons. They're just your bad behaviors, your bad kind of responses to things, like the way you kind of knee-jerk respond. And usually when you're obese, it has to do with food. And your response to stress tends to be turning to food. And that's kind of a knee-jerk reaction to any new stress in your life. And whether that be a demon coming up that you're like, okay, that's why I got fat in the first place. And some of that's what this is. I never took charge of a career. I was so focused on my kids, which I don't regret. Um, but it always hovered in the back of my mind. And I always felt like I wasn't living up to what I wanted to be doing for me. Um, and, you know... I'm kind of in that. I need to figure that part out because um, I need to figure out who I am separate from my kids. I think that's important for all moms, um, whether you're in the midst of little kids or your kids are grown up. Who are you separate from your family? Because it's so easy for us to just sort of only relate to what they need and our lives become about keeping up with their schedules or getting them places here, getting them places there, making them dinner cleaning the house for everybody, you know, maintaining the whole family thing, which is important, obviously. But where are you separate from them? And that's where I need to figure it out. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I have, um, I, I was going to do measurements, which I think I'll do another video because this one's getting really long. Um, I'll do another video because I want to talk about our Colorado group and I want to talk about my measurements. So I'm going to end this video as a part one and do a part two. See you in a bit.